I now hand the conference over to Ms. Sheetal Kanduja from Go India Advisors. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Neera. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Gayatri Project Limited's earnings call to discuss the Q1 FY22 results. We have on the call Mr. Sandeep Reddy, Managing Director of the company. We must remind you that the discussion on today's call may include certain forward-looking statements and must be therefore viewed in conjunction with the risk that the company faces. May I now request Mr. Sandeep Reddy to take us through the company's business outlook and financial highlights, subsequent to which we will open the floor for Q&A. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Sheetal. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for taking out time to join us for our Q1 FI22 earnings call. I hope you and your family members are safe and healthy. I hope you have seen the earnings presentation which has been uploaded on the exchanges. I would like to start with the updating on you on your on project execution status. Despite COVID-led disruption on account of second wave, we were able to maintain a reasonably strong state of project execution. Purvanchal Expressway is near completion and will be handed over soon. We are also uh, made significant progress at Odisha projects. Uh, uh, and similarly, the NHA project in, uh, at Andhra Tamil Nadu body is progressing well. In the non-road segment, our EPC mining work is advancing well. We have a strong order book backlog, an order book of uh, 124 plus billion with, our, with a book to bill of three times. Uh, with regards to the NHA issue, we have rectified most of the deficiencies at the Sultanpur Varnasi site and we are now uh, engaged with NHA to get the earlier order reversed. We will keep you updated of developments in this matter. Secondly, as you are all aware that our balance sheet is stretched uh, due to the delays in payments from states on account of the pandemic. But we are committed to improving our balance sheet and this, in this regard, we have made some key strategic decisions. I'm happy to report we have signed a definitive agreement with Interrupts USA and the board has approved a preferential allotment of 75 million equity shares of two rupees each, which translates to an infusion of 337 crores in, in the company, subject to the approval of the shareholders at the ensuing AGM. Post the allotment, the strategic investors and promoters will have a combined holding of 59% in the company on the expanded capital base. This equity infusion will help the company partially pay this long-term debt and restore its accounts to regular status from current default status. The company currently has a long-term debt of 519 crores. Moving on to our financial performance for the quarter, uh, Q1 was up 34% at 897 crores. EBITDA for the period was 27% higher at 109 crores. EBITDA growth was driven by strong gross margins which improved to 18.7 from 13.3 in the last quarter. We are still facing the impact of higher commodity prices and margins continue to remain under pressure. The PAT was at 23 as against a negative profitability of 12 crores on our Q1 FY21. Our working capital requirements increased by almost 2 billion this quarter on account of delayed payments from state governments. Coming to Q2 and full year outlook, uh, the Q2 is usually a uh, season, a seasonally weak quarter on account of monsoon and we will see the impact of slower execution. Hence, we expect a flattish to marginal revenue growth. With this, I will open the floor for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Shania Nair from Value Investments. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, so now that your Purvanchal project is completed, which projects are we focusing on? No, we will. Uh, we still have uh, uh, currently, as you said, order book is twelve thousand five hundred crores. So we would be now focusing on the uh, Delhi Saranpur Elevated Expressway, which is about thirteen hundred crores, and also the new water projects which you want. These are the new projects we'll be focusing more now. Okay. And so what is the status of the Jal Jeevan project? Any update on the execution? And could you also provide some information on labor availability currently? No, our first phase of about 800 crores, what we have the what I call as surface water projects. Those are progressing as per schedule. There's no issue. Uh, I don't think, okay, we were disrupted in month of May due to labor uh, problem. But I think 
see mostly we you uh, the we don't use much of um, uh, well, uh, migrant labor for these water parties. Mostly, these are all done in the villages, so most of the local labor are used. So that way, there is not much of low, uh, so much issue compared to the regular construction projects where people come from uh, faraway states. And uh, coming to uh, the other phase, uh, second phase of the Jajivan projects, which are where we have to do the DPRs. We have got about 1,400 villages where we have submitted DPRs, and those are under still scrutiny, and we are expecting next one to. Uh, finalize the, DP, the convert the DPR into a contract. So we are, from that time onwards, the 18 months it takes to complete those projects. Okay, and so uh, regarding the balance sheet exposure on the irrigation segment, yeah. are we receiving any payments on time now? Not at all. In fact, uh, irrigation segment is badly hit because we have balance sheet exposure of nearly, um, um, I think, last six months because of COVID. Uh, the Andhra, Telangana, and Karnataka have delayed the payments. That is what is affected us badly. Okay, so uh, thank you for answering my questions. If I have any more but questions, have started, uh, I think this month they have promised us that they will start uh, clearing the payments. I feel that in the, maybe the next two quarters the uh, the receivable position will improve substantially. Okay, so thank you so much for the uh, clarification. I'll yeah. get back into you if I have further questions. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Amanjit Singh from Oculus Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, I'm audible, sir. <coughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Yes, sir. sir, I just want to check. Uh, so this uh, preferential issue that you've done will lead to an equity infusion of 337 crores. Sir, by when are we expecting the funds? So no, actually we are having the shareholders uh, EGM on 28th uh, and after the shareholder approval, uh, it's a the regular process. Uh, then we are done for board meeting and then issue of shares. Probably should take a week. Okay, so you are expecting the funds to come within a week, sir? Approximately yeah. week 10 days? Yeah. Okay. So, and out of the 337, sir, how, how much will be you, you using uh, to, dip, uh, to kind of park your debt and how much will be using for work? No, we, are, we are working on We'll work out uh, prudently what is uh, payable to debt, uh, some portion of the debt, and also to uh, some portion we use for working capital for speeding up the existing projects also. Got it. Got it, sir. Uh, that's it for my side. Uh, just to clarify, the money yeah. could take one week after the EGM. EGM is on 28. Got it. So, so by say mid of next month approximately, like latest? Yeah, maybe first week of next month. First week of next month. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you must press star one to ask the question. The next question is from the line of Puneet Saraswat, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Mr. Reddy. This is Puneet. I uh, want to ask two questions from you. So, like uh, one of our participants asked that uh, after the AGM, you will be getting uh, with the shareholders' approval, you will be getting the money. So, is that uh, the equity that you will be getting would be in tranches or it would be a one time payment? One time. Question one. One time. Okay. And second question is that. Uh, you have mentioned in your investor presentation also that uh, there is an impact on margins uh, due to this uh, material cost. And uh, and if we see the commodity cycle also, it is not likely that it is going in a downtrend or it is not likely that it is going in a, uh, like we can say it is in almost in an uptrend to, uh, uh, uptrend to maybe the balance position, like not moving much here and there. And if it moves, what are is our backup plan because that has impacted the margins a lot. And uh, is there anything that we? I don't. I don't yeah. think it is further going to go up now. Steel prices are more or less stabilized. See, the thing is, going forward, up sometimes the escalation catches up. See, the escalation formula is based on the index. See, normally what we have seen from our experience, the index never catches. It is like the commodity price goes up by one shot, but the index doesn't go exactly to that. The index slowly moves up. 
So I, I tell, um, probably by next two quarters, the uh, yeah, as long as the commodity prices are more or less stable at this price, the index would catch up to that. Then after that, um, 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 we, um, uh, we, um, our margins will come back to normalcy, actually. This impacted us very badly because if you look at it from January to June, where the, um, the major uh, steel prices have gone up, diesel prices have gone up, and vitamin prices have gone up. So you expect not uh, you expect not uh, further movement in steel prices uh, like in the kacha market what we say? I think so. Uh, I, 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 what we've been hearing that steel prices are more or less stabilized now, unless uh, they further go up. I don't know here. I'm not. I can't predict the price. Uh, and I think we have seen even uh, last one month even diesel prices are more or less stable now. Okay. Okay. That's fast. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Anil Sharma from EV Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Good afternoon. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just yeah. a couple of questions from my side. Uh, so, sir, first in terms of NHEI, uh, what's the status of the re resolution that's going on with the NHEI? Uh, I think we are rectifying it. We are rectification is going on since uh, see, these are concrete panels. So it can't be done overnight. It takes about two, three months. Uh, we got the order in June. As you know, we are only two months over. And also monsoon time is another problem. Because on the, um, so we are rectifying those panels. Once we rectify them, then we call the NHA officials for uh, inspection and then they will do it. So we are expecting in the next um, uh, one month or one and a half month to uh, come to normal things. So sir, what non-NHAI projects are you looking at right now then? We have bid actually. We have recently bid also for one uh, bid in Karnataka for an irrigation project, but uh, we did not get it. So, but no, what, what I have seen, the bidding pipeline has been very, last three months has not been very active at all. Nothing much is happening because of, I think post COVID, still people are, uh, um, state governments and all are just uh, figuring out how to get out of uh, their funding and all that, I feel. So practically, if you see, it hasn't really affected us. Our order book is still three times uh, our uh, book to bill ratio. So we have enough order. So we are not in a, uh, in a hurry to, you know, take new orders. Okay. And second, sir, was on the, you know, interest cost side. So could you guide us on the aggregate interest cost and the, like, how will that move over the next few quarters with the, you know, the capital? Cost, about, about 11%, no? 11%. 11%. So the timeline for the repayment of debt, would that change with the uh, infusion of additional capital? Yeah, yeah. In fact, some of this debt, uh, the overdue will be paid, but the debt repayment is going on as per schedule, no? So there's no difference uh, in uh, there are, there are no difference in repayment. The repayment schedule is going on. No, no. So I'm asking, will the timeline change for that? No, no nothing will change. No, timeline won't change. Uh, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Amanjit Singh from Oculus Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, so FI21, you did about 3,900 crore of top line, and FI22, yeah. you guided from 0 to 5%. And I think that's primarily because of your Q1 being impacted by COVID and Q2 being seasonally weak. Sir, uh, but uh, how are you seeing uh, FI23? Uh, so what is the outlook on that? Yeah, FI-23 will be very good actually. FI-22, definitely uh, we will, uh, as I told you, the present order book has to be finished within the next two and a half years. So you, so all the projects now are in full swing. So the FI-23 definitely will be much higher. I don't, I don't, FI-23 is too, I can't predict today how much turnover I can do. It's too early. Alright, so but you mentioned that, uh, you know, you've got a, Order book, uh, and you have to finish it within two to and a half years. And considering yes. knockoffs is 3900 crore. Sorry to interrupt you, but your audio is not clear. Yeah. So, that way, we say next year I should do about 15% um, um, growth. Uh, definitely, we will try to achieve 15% uh, this year. I think that's in the next six months we will catch up, third and fourth quarter, definitely. Okay, so FI23, you're looking at approximately 15%. But FI22, 23 FI next year, right? We are in 22 now. You are asking for 22 or 23? Sir, 23, sir. 23 is next year, right? Yes, sir. In your presentation, FI22 guidance, you have given revenue 0 to 5% growth, sir, on slide 15. Yes. Uh, so you are saying that is going to be higher, sir, you are saying? 
no, no, five percent growth is what we have guided officially. Uh, okay. It could go up also. See, it's too early to predict. Got it. Got it. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may press star and one to ask the question. The next question is from the line of Shanaya Nair from Value Investments. Please go ahead. Um, sir, uh, what is the status of more orders in the water segment under the Jal Se Nal scheme? What is the scope in UP and which other states are more ag going aggressive on the scheme? So I think uh, currently UP has the third phase coming up. Probably take another six months. I understand, but right now we are. Uh, as I told you, we have 800 crores of uh, surface water projects, and also the DPR is approximately uh, what we have got for 1,400 villages. Yeah. Uh, will will go up to about 2,000 for what we have seen for few of the sample DPRs. Okay. And sir, upside from Semcorp in India, say, is there any visibility of that happening in the next 12 months? Yeah, in fact, Semcorp is uh, seriously working out. Uh, I think I have three options. One, looking at an IPO. Three, two, divestment of their uh, renewable assets, uh, getting a strategic partner. Also, divestment of their uh, coal assets. In any of these uh, divestments happen, we, uh, we we would be able to get in some money for our share, as an as per our option agreement. Okay. I think 12 months we will see definitely some uh, movement in Semco. Okay. Okay. And so, since we are in default right now, are you no. talking to any kind of banks for restructuring? Do we require restructuring of working no, no, capital no, loans as well? No, we are not. We are right now in default, but we are once the equity and also some of the receivables come, we, we, are, we will become current to the banks in the, probably in a quarter step. Okay. Okay, sir. And so, do we have adequate bank guarantee limits to bid for new orders? How yes. much is our limit and what have, amount is on you? I can get back, I don't remember our fine. But we have about nearly five, four to 500 crores of unused. And also we are expecting in the next six months a lot of guarantees will get returned because most of the existing projects get over, they will return. So we, 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 that way we, we have enough buyer and guarantees to take care of order inflow of about three to 5,000 per annum. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Urvija Shah from Isha Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Uh, sir, how much debt uh, you said is due for repayment in this year? In this year? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, the rest of the year? Rest of the year is about, I think about 100. See, initially 2,234 courses. No, no, no. What is the due repayment? Uh, one minute. One minute, which is 1,700 courses. Oh, I see. What is the debt? Re what you're asking our total term debt is 500. What is the repayment in this year? What you're asking, isn't it? Yes, yes. So, sir, can you help me with the total working capital debt, long term debt? You said it is 500. So, what is yeah, the, the uh, total debt, debt on the books? Debt, actually, the total debt on books is total debt on books is how much? Around 2,000. And how much is due for repayment? 500 is due for 500 is a total term loan which will take up to 2020. I don't know if I have the schedule we can share with you afterwards if you want. Yeah. Okay. Would you, do you have any follow up question? Uh, I think I'll take it offline. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. The next question is from the line of Anil Sharma from AB Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity yeah. again. Just one thing I wanted to check uh, what all awards and claims, you know, can we uh, monetize this year and any sort of timelines for monetization if you can please provide? 
No, no, we are expecting uh, uh, this year, I think, at least around 200 crores of claims to be monetized. Pardon? I didn't get yeah, the solution. We are actually working out with NHA, the reconciliation process is on. So, we feel that we will be able to uh, realize at least around 200 crores of claims. And uh, uh, other, uh, other lot of claims are stuck in courts, which I am unable to answer at all because the way courts are working in this country. And one more thing, sir, in terms of statutory dues, like PF and gratuity kind of thing. So yeah. are we behind on that particular aspect as well? We are behind by a month of PF and all, they are okay. okay. Uh, not some okay. tedious, uh, one, one quarter is on and off because of the same delay in cash flows. So one quarter of lag, you are saying? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Okay, and lastly, just one more thing on the strategic investor side. So, uh, when I see their balance sheet, they don't seem to have that much of you know enough capital. How sure are we, you know, in terms of getting funds from them? Yeah, basically, uh, they are not the direct investor. See, they are a, a a company which arranges the money and also holding asset management company. So they are basically getting money from uh, they are holding retirement uh, assets from the U.S. Uh, uh, retirement funds. So they root in other uh, funds. So it's all they, they are not directly in their name. It is uh, it's a financial investor actually. So do we have another plan? Let's say if this doesn't materialize, so if this doesn't happen, so do we have another plan B kind of thing? I will not materialize. They have signed everything. They are a, they are a New York listed company. So um, I don't think we we will. Let's wait for 20 days. While, uh, after that, we will see any other plan. Mm. Okay, okay. Thank you, then. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants. You may press star and one to ask a question. A reminder to all the participants. You may press star and one to ask a question. I think. I think everybody's over. The next question is from the line of Amanjit Singh. From Oculus Capital, please go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so just one follow-up. So the, the strategic investor, I think, is listed in the U.S. as well, right? Yes. So, so in their exchange filing, they have actually spoken about a possible follow-on investment after this initial investment of uh, 337 crores. So, so any, yeah. any color on or have you had any discussions so further on the timeline? They're, they're looking at further investment. Uh, okay. Yeah, board has to decide, so we are not yet um, decided about that. So, so let us get the first phase first. Okay, but uh, so that will be basis of uh, some any milestones or something? Because I think they spoke about something 49% uh, stake or something was for their filing uh, to the SEC. Yeah, their basic thing is that they want to maintain 51, 49% of the promoter's stake. Okay. And then also they wanted to do some basic due diligence for the second phase. So they are still not yet decided. It is still under okay. process. Okay. So, so have they approached you with a proposal or something? So is it is it lying with your board, sir, or you are still to receive a proposal from their end? No, we are we are still uh, discussing with them actually. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. All the very best. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. As there are no further questions, I will now hand the conference over to Mr. Sandeep Reddy for closing yeah. comments. Yeah. So thank you for joining us on the call today. I do hope we have been able to satisfactorily address your queries. In case you have any pending or follow-on queries, please contact the team at Go India Advisors and they will be able to address any questions you may have. Thanks for your support and time. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of Go India Advisors, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.